Thanks for joining me for the 25 best series of this century. This is 10 through 6. Number 10 is Rome, which was on HBO for only two seasons, but that's all they really needed because it leaves a memorable impact. There's excellent performances. Fans of ancient Rome will probably enjoy this more than anyone, but I think the production values are great. To me, this is a better series than Game of Thrones, but it still has some of the action, the attention to detail, the epicness, the scope. Check it out. Number nine is The Nick, which was on Cinemax. I think it's surprising that Cinemax had so many good shows when they were doing original programming. I think that shocks a lot of people. They would never think to have a show on Cinemax be this highly ranked. But to me, this is the best medical drama of all time. It's set in a period time period. So this is early medicine. This is back when they knew very little about medicine, almost nothing. Clive Owen is great in the lead role. And the series finale is genuinely shocking. I mean, I was genuinely shocked. And at the time, I don't think it was supposed to be the series finale. I think they had planned to do further seasons. And so if they'd done further seasons, it would have been even more shocking what happens. But ultimately, this is a good period show. The technique is great. Steven Soderbergh, he's experimented in several different TV shows. This is by far the best. Um, it, it really feels like a movie that's also a procedural medical drama about sort of the founding of modern medicine and how that got started, as well as racism and sexism. Mental health sort of begins the discovery of that late into the series. So anyway, check that out. Number eight is Frasier. Now, people would be surprised to see Frasier on here because it started in the 90s. Most of its episodes are in the 90s, not the double O's. But because the final three or four seasons are in this century, it does count. It does qualify. Some series that start in the 90s, but into the double O's, it depends on how good they are, honestly. Like if they don't, weren't having good episodes in the double O's and all their best ones were in the 90s, like Friends, for example, I, I don't really care to include it. And also, I don't really like Friends that much. Frasier is unique in that it's a... On this entire list, it's the only sort of laugh track based uh, three camera comedy, not single camera comedy. So people say, well, it's sort of old fashioned, it's sort of hokey. I don't really like Frasier that much. It doesn't fit with the rest of this list. But to me, it, it is different because first of all, the quintet of actors that make up the center are excellent. All of them uniformly excellent. And there's a reason that they won Emmys for so long. But I think also the attention to detail in the psychology of these characters. There's episodes of Frazier where he spends a whole episode dealing with depression or going down the rabbit hole or dealing with dreams or talking about a lost memory or things from the past that are affecting him in the future or the depression of his love life. Now, these are not really things that we saw that much, especially in the 90s when comedies were like friends. They were very shallow. They mostly dealt with young, attractive people living in a city, you know, hanging out, having a good time. And you saw that template over and over with happy endings and new girl. And that really shaped things a lot more than Frazier did. But to have episodes that are dealing with psychologically complex things, rivalries and feelings, and the entire question is, in one episode, they ask him, are you happy? And he spends an entire episode trying to discover if he's really happy or not. Do you think me and my wife should be together? His brother asked him at one point. These are things that I don't, I don't know if a lot of shows really deal with the internal dynamics of their characters. And then to have a series in the 90s on NBC and have a somewhat traditional comedy format dealing with these kind of questions, it really is unique, guys. Frazier is subtly more revolutionary than you think it is. You might think it's a stodgy old show or whatever, but it really is better than I think a lot of people give it credit for. The seventh best of this century is Lost. Another show, like Frasier, that was on a broadcast network, and people hate Lost now, which is strange to me. They, they seem to think the ending was bad. The ending was not bad, but they seem to be under the impression that the ending sucked and that ruins the series and that's why it's bad. I really disagree with that. But Lost is a series that it's about the mystery. It's leading up to the mystery. I don't think I expected the series to answer every single question that we ever had, although it answers a lot more than people think. People treat it like it's Twin Peaks. They treat it like it's indecipherable garbage that's not very well made, and critics just praised it anyway. Lost does answer a lot of its own questions. But more importantly than that are the characters that we get involved in. Sawyer and John Locke are my personal two favorites. You'll have your own favorites. Jack, in the beginning, couldn't stand him. And then by the final season, I really liked him and was rooting for him. 
mythological characters that are creeping around the edges, like the man in black. I don't want to give too much away, but the mystery does evolve. It does get more complicated. But at the center is this core group of characters that we really like and enjoy spending time with and want to spend more time with. And that's really all you can ask for is a drama where you actually give a damn what happens to the characters. And if they're in danger, you care if they get out of it or not. And Lost delivers on that score. And I do like the ending a lot more than most people do. I thought it was inspiring and profound. Some people don't. Some people hate the leftovers. I thought that ending was inspiring. So this depends on your taste. The sixth one is King of the Hill. Now, this series, I think, is surprising because it's animated. And also, it was on Fox. It's another broadcast show. Again, most of the broadcast shows, if you'll notice, they're from several years ago. This is sort of before broadcast, eventually gave up, in my opinion, on doing quality shows and let them all go to cable and streaming. And nowadays, I don't watch a single show on broadcast TV. I don't think they're even really trying. And that's kind of sad, you know. But King of the Hill is one of those that if you live in the Southeast and if you're from either suburban or rural area in the Southeast, it's going to resonate so much, so much of what they do. Like Frazier, started in the 90s, but had many seasons into the double O's. That's why it's included here. And Hank Hill, he could be he could be my dad. I mean, Hank Hill feels like a real person. King of the Hill is different in that it's an animated show where the characters feel more real than most scripted comedies. I mean, a lot of comedies, especially on broadcast, they're, they're cartoon characters. They don't even feel like they're trying to make them real people. But King of the Hill, I'm like, this is a animated series that could almost be a docudrama or something. I mean, these feel like people I went to high school with or grew up with. They're in my family. They're in my neighborhood. And because the situations are so realistic and so culturally specific, I think it really makes it stand out. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Come back to the final five.